Okay, we are moving directly to um, talking about um, electrical methods and then electromagnetic methods of geophysical surveying. And we're going to uh, start that uh, uh, before uh, talking about GPS um, and before talking about uh, uh, downhole geophysics, borehole geophysics. Um, so we want to talk first about the electrical properties of rocks. So we have 20 slides here. Uh, that Gary Oppliger put together uh, uh, originally, and I've just edited a tiny bit. And um, so um, what we want to talk about is uh, the property, the rock property of, uh, well, the uh, phenomenon of, of resistance, okay, which is named after the uh, uh, a physicist named uh, Ohm, right? Um, and a, but of course, when you spell it as a unit uh, by SI standards, you don't use when you spell it out. You don't use the uh, the capital letter, even though it's a proper name. It's uh, you're using it as a unit. Um, so uh, an ohm is a resistance in a conductor that produces a potential difference of one volt when a current of one amp is flowing through it. One ampere. Uh, so the um, uh, the resistance is um, the uh, volts of um, uh, of uh, potential difference um, divided by the amps. Okay, and if you work all that out in terms of um, uh, of, uh, <coughs> of of units, you have uh, meters squared times kilograms divided by seconds to the third power divided by uh, amperes uh, 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 squared. Okay, So you have a, uh, a voltage, and, um, and uh, that is uh, producing a, uh, a current flow through a, resist a resistance, okay? which we have uh, represented as this resistor symbol here, the jagged uh, line, the sawtooth line. So Ohm's law, uh, you know, which is uh, uh, one of Maxwell's, it's involved in Maxwell's equations, okay, and it says that the um, the current I uh, in uh, amps is equal to the voltage, okay, the voltage difference in volts divided by the resistance in ohms. All right, so current is equal to voltage over resistance. All right, and there's a website uh, here in the uh, given in the notes that uh, uh, is where Gary took each of these uh, illustrations and uh, and relationships from. Um, the electron, uh, uh, you know, is bouncing around uh, between the uh, you know in a copper wire is is bouncing around between the copper uh, atoms, uh, of course, at a very uh, fast velocity. Uh, it's called the Fermi speed, but uh, you know it's relative. Um, uh, it's it's absolute velocity, you know, with time, you know, call it a secular velocity if you want. Uh, it's just a very small component of that. So, you know, it starts uh, here, bounces around like crazy, ends up right here, and that'll give you its uh, drift velocity. So the actual uh, drift velocity of the uh, um, of the uh, of the current is uh, the actual velocity of the current is much much less than the the Fermi speed. Okay, now we need to talk about uh, resistance versus resistivity. Okay, resistance is in ohms. Resistance is relative to a particular circuit. Okay, the units are ohms. Um, and uh, the uh, 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 and and you got to have a particular current, and you got to have a particular a particular resistor. You know, which could be uh, the resistor is made up of material that has. <clears throat> the material property of resistivity. Okay, so resistivity is an intrinsical property of all physical materials. You know, it can be high or low, right? A high resistivity would be characteristic of an insulator, and uh, as we would call it, and a low resistivity would be characteristic of uh, a conductor. You know, as as we would call it. Uh, but of course, uh, especially when we're talking about rocks, there's uh, all kinds of uh, intermediate resistivity values that are that are in between the um, 
that are, that are in between, uh, you know, resistor and uh, uh, or insulator and, and conductor. Okay, so um, you know, resistor can be uh, can have any value. All right, so um, uh, the units now we have to uh, you know make the uh, um, make the instead of ohms right, which only applies to one particular circuit right. Uh, you pick up a, a resistor that uh, maybe uh, uh, some of you might have seen that you would install in a uh, in a circuit on a circuit board, and you know that's got wires going in and out of it, and it's got a certain quantity and arrangement of uh, geometry of the uh, material that that has a certain resistivity, and thus it produces a certain resistance. Well, when we're talking about an intrinsic property of materials, we need to make it specific to you know what's the quantity and arrangement of material that we have. All right, and and only when we define all that do we have a resistance. So the intrinsic property itself has to have some kind of spatial um, uh, spatial unit attached to it, and with resistivity, it's ohms times meters. Okay, and so ohm meter is the unit, the SI unit for uh, resistivity, as distinct from the resistance which is given in ohms. Okay. Now you'll see uh, as well as we talk about uh, resistivity surveying, okay, that we get apparent resistivities, which is a, it's an estimate, some kind of estimate of uh, this intrinsic resistivity property, that's uh, based on a, you know, assuming a half space geometry. So it's it's kind of like uh, you know the apparent resistivity is is like the stacking velocity or the, or the um, uh, the RMS velocity, it's an uh, it's an average resistivity over a certain volume, you know that that comes out of a certain kind of experiment. All right, so we'll uh, we'll we'll learn, you know, later on that we can model a resistivity structure or a resistivity profile, you know, going down from apparent resistivities measured at say different A spacings. Okay. Uh, but an apparent resistivity has the same units, ohm meters. Okay. Now um, you'll also, uh, you know, if you've looked at papers on uh, on resistivity surveying, you've heard conductivity referred to. All right, and conductivity is very closely related to uh, uh, to uh, uh, resistivity. Resistivity, and I'm sorry, um, this is uh, this is wrong. So. I'm going to go in and correct it right now. Um, resistivity, resistivity. I think I got that right. Um, is uh, referred to as uh, rho in uh, in ohm meters. Okay, resistivity is referred to as as rho, and this meter and the the um, um, the units are ohm meter. Okay, uh, if it was resistance, right? Then uh, that would be R, and that would be in ohms only. Okay, uh, so resistivity is is in ohm meters, and conductivity is just uh, here. That's a uh, a small Greek letter letter sigma. Okay, and that's uh, one over rho. It's just the very simple inverse of resistivity. Conductivity is the inverse of resistivity. Uh, now you can see they turned uh, they turned the word ohm around and call it mo, right? And so it's, and then and then the you know the meter instead of being on the uh, uh, on the on the top now goes to the denominator. So it's mos per meter. Uh, but there is a, a better SI unit that we'll refer to, and instead of mos, uh, they use uh, Siemens. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe the Three Stooges had a had a had a lock on the on the mo, and so uh, we can't use it. We use Siemens instead. And you might have heard of the Siemens company, which builds all kinds of uh, electrical equipment, uh, you know, from uh, giant generators and turbines on down uh, to simple uh, uh, resistivity meters. And uh, uh, so there, uh, the the System International uh, uh, decided to honor uh, Mr. Siemens uh, with uh, with his own unit name, which is a unit of uh, conductance. Okay. Just like ohm is is resistance, okay. So uh, Siemens is a unit is Siemens per meter is a unit of conductance, and then here it is abbreviated, right? Uh, 
meter abbreviates to little m, but Siemens, since it's a proper name, abbreviates to capital S. All right. So capital S per meter, right? If it's if it was a small s, and here's where you know SI units uh, don't make that much sense, right? If it was a small s, that would be seconds per meter. That would be a, a seismic slowness. But this is a capital S, right? So it's Siemens per meter, which is uh, an electrical conductivity unit. Uh, so you've got to watch out for that. Uh, you know, uh, unit uh, unit business, SI unit business. All right, so how do we calculate resistance from resistivity? All right, the resistance of a length of wire is given by uh, that's R. Okay, is given by the resistivity rho of that of that wire material uh, times its length L divided by its cross sectional area A. Right, so there's uh, big L, the length uh, divided by uh, by the cross sectional area A. Okay, and that that wire material has uh, has a resistivity rho. Okay, and uh, now you can you know you can make it specific, make a specific circuit, and uh, and thus get the resistance in ohms instead of having the resistivity in ohm meter. All right, so um, you know, let's ask the question: What influences, just like you know, with velocity and seismic and density and in gravity and magnetic susceptibility in uh, magnetic surveying, we need to get some sense of what factors influence the electrical conductivity of, of the rock materials that we're going to be dealing with. You know, I'm not talking about special materials. Um, I'm talking about the rocks that we, you know, that we would encounter in the in the field in our Schur's field area, even. All right. So uh, these are arranged here. These factors are arranged from the most important at the top to the least important at the bottom. And the first thing you'll notice is that the uh, the intrinsic resistivity of the of the rock matrix, you know, the quartz and feldspar uh, mineral grains in the sand, that's the least important thing. All these other things are more important than the intrinsic. Um, uh, resistivity of the rock matrix. Okay, isn't that crazy? I mean, that's not true of velocity, or uh, 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 or uh, uh, magnetic susceptibility, or or density. Right? Um, the rock matrix intrinsic uh, uh, property has much more effect on those other uh, bulk properties of rocks. But um, electrical resistivity property. Uh, that that property of rocks has uh, has everything to do with the porosity and what's in the pores. Okay, and and that is really different. And also, really, that's that's why I'm 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 lecturing about resistivity, even though I don't know much that much about it, because it's really important in solving hydro hydrological problems. And there are a lot of geophysicists who who make their uh, who make a pretty good living. Uh, by uh, doing geophysical and electrical experiments, all right, for uh, water resources and um, and for uh, waste containment problems, right? Um, that um, um, uh, that that really are using the resistivity to tell them all about the porosity and the pore fluid. Okay, so so it's really the connected or or sometimes called the effective porosity. That uh, uh, that determines this um, um, this uh, 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 the the electrical resistivity. Um, so uh, you know clearly we're regarding the the rock matrix, the the quartz and feldspar grains as perfect insulators, and and relative to what's in the pores, they they really are perfect insulators. Okay, so the it has to be fracture porosity or or the the poor the poor uh, space uh, among gran within a granular material, right? It's connected porosity. If you have uh, you know vugs or or um, uh, or vesicles uh, like uh, a vesicular basalt that has isolated vesicles, that porosity is not going to count, okay? Um, because it's not connected porosity. All right, so connected porosity is number one. Next one is is what's in the pores. Is it is it air? Is it gas? And that has a big effect on the resistivity. Okay, so if you um, if you get 100% air in the in the pores, uh, 
you know, air is an insulator, and so the whole thing will be an insulator. All right. Uh, then uh, also oil, okay, is a uh, <clears throat> you know the hydrocarbon fluids are relative resistors, right? So the the percent of hydrocarbons in the porosity also has a as a big effect, okay? So if it's ninety percent brine, uh, it'll have a much lower resistivity than if it's ninety percent oil in the in the pores. Uh, maybe that's a way to directly detect uh, you know an oil reservoir. There's also the uh, the salinity now now you know factoring out uh, whether that you've got a lot of uh, you know if you don't have a lot of air in the pores or or gas in the pores if you don't have a lot of hydrocarbons in the pores then the next the next thing and and the most important thing for most of our resistivity measurements is is really the uh, the salinity of the water okay uh, and then if the if the salinity of the water is not a factor like uh, uh, we found in um, uh, up at South Lake Tahoe last year, you know, we had basically uh, uh, distilled water, you know, a perfect insulator uh, in our in our pores when we tried to make resistivity measurements. Then it then it uh, broke down to the clay content, okay. And in those areas where we had zero clay, we still had a perfect insulator, and uh, we couldn't even measure. You know, the resistivity is so high we could not measure it. All right. Then you get the uh, metal metallic sulfide mineral content, okay. Uh, and then the temperature of the fluid is a is a minor component of the overall electrical resistivity. A minor component of the of the overall electrical resistivity. All right. So this this focus on the pores um, means that uh, we can borrow a lot of relationships from uh, hydrology and hydrogeology. Okay. So uh, you know with this assumption that the mineral grains in the rock are are you know perfect electrical insulators, and it's not a bad assumption, you know, given most of the materials that we have, quartz, feldspar, okay, the, uh, the electrical conductivity uh, occurs because of the moisture contained within the pores uh, and the moisture that's coating the, uh, uh, the mineral grains within the rock or soil, okay. Now there's uh, several, several things that it, can that it uh, depends on, okay, the, uh, as we've said, the, the salinity of the moisture, the uh, the clay content, okay, uh, the degree of saturation of the pores, right? Is it 100% or is it something less? Uh, you know, is there a lot of air in there? Uh, and also, how many pores there are, the pore size and the pore shape, uh, and and how are they interconnected? What's the geometry of their of the pore interconnections? Okay, so for most soils, the degree of of compaction. Uh, you know, because it influences porosity, is also an important factor. All right. So here, uh, you know, we're borrowing Archie's law from hydrogeology, right? And so we have the effective, you know, formation resistivity, rho sub e, okay, is equal to a um, to a constant a times the uh, the porosity raised to a power of minus m, okay. My, this M is another, uh, you know, geometric, uh, uh, geometric uh, factor, okay. And then you also got to multiply by this S, right, which is the fraction of the pore space that contains water, okay, the conductive stuff, not not insulating stuff like oil or uh, or or gas, a free gas, and that also uh, has a, a further geometric exponent here, this N, this little N, and then. Uh, all that is multiplied against the resistivity of the water. So you can see that the effective porosity under Archie's law here, the effective, the effective resistivity, rho sub e, of the rock the, is all about the porosity, okay? Uh, and it's all about how the pores are connected through these m and n. They're, they're sometimes called tortuosities, okay? Um, and, uh, and all about the... Uh, uh, the resistivity of the water in the pores, rho sub w, okay, and and it's this the resistivity of the mineral grains of the of the rock grains, or or the rock in between the fractures. It's not in the equation. It doesn't count, okay. That's because it has so little influence. All right. So uh, you know, let's look at that that effect, right? If we if we take uh, if we look at the uh, uh, the bulk resistivity, okay, and 
we collect together all those effects in this previous slide, right? A uh, phi phi to the power of minus m, s to the power of minus n. Okay, we collect all those together in this f here, which we call the formation factor f, and then uh, we multiply the formation factor times the resistivity of the water, and that gives us our bulk resistivity. Okay. Um, and so uh, you know that's gonna the formation factor depends on how the pores are connected. It depends on the on the porosity. It depends on all kinds of things. Okay, uh, but you can see here that if we can determine the bulk resistivity of the of the rock, and we can get a, some control on the formation factor, then we can tell um, we might be able to back out of our out of our experiments and our measurements, our surveys, what the resistivity of the water itself is. Or conversely, if we know the resistivity of the water, we can back out the formation factor. So here's the, uh, uh, you know, we take the resistivity of the water, and we divide by the resistivity of the formation as a whole. <clears throat> and this is done a lot in in uh, electrical well log analysis because you have all these things available. You know, the resistivity of the water would be the mud filtrate uh, resistivity, and uh, you the 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 tool. The resistivity tool measures the uh, the the resistivity the bulk resistivity of the of the formation. Uh, actually, these are conductivities here, right? So we're uh, here we're we're instead of using resistivity, we're using conductivity. So there's the conductivity of the water, the conductivity of the uh, of the formation, okay? And that ratio gives you the formation factor, okay? Which is um, you know if we if we ignore the um, uh, if, if, for instance, if we have all water, okay, and no um, no air or oil, as as we would do below the water table in most places, okay, then we can ignore the uh, s to the power of minus n, right? So it's just this uh, a. It's an empirical constant for unconsolidated sediments, you know, granular sediments. It might be uh, one uh, times uh, the porosity uh, phi, the affected porosity. Uh, raise to the power of minus m, and m is uh, typically uh, two. The tortuosity is two for unconsolidated sediments. Okay, so um, uh, that you know, for uh, without uh, air, without uh, gas, without oil, uh, we have a pretty simple formation factor here that depends entirely on the porosity. Okay, so uh, uh, really quite uh, quite amazing. Uh, now, um, you know, if we have a non-conducting uh, uh, rock matrix, so you know, and virtually all rocks fall into that, um, you know, perhaps there are some ores that have enough uh, sulfides in them to be uh, to have a conducting matrix, but those would be pretty, pretty spectacular ores, right? Um, perhaps uh, uh, you know, you can go to a graphitic shale that that would have a conducting matrix, all right. But other than those bizarre uh, occurrences. Right, uh, we really need a uh, uh, we really need connected pores to uh, to give us some resistivity of uh, of rock. Okay, uh, so it's got to be uh, it's got to be permeable, you know, with connected pores as well as porous. Right, can't have isolated pores to conduct electricity as well as water. Okay, so uh, amazingly enough, um, you know, most geophysical measurements really have nothing to do with the uh, permeability. Of a rock, but resistivity might, so it can be really valuable in water resources, uh, or or uh, or in uh, you know uh, oil and gas reservoir uh, uh, analysis, and that's uh, uh, you know that's that's really where it, it brings its extra value. Here's uh, Darcy's law, which says that um, you have a difference in uh, in you have a difference in head over a distance uh, dh. Um, and uh, you multiply that by minus k, and that's the quant that's the fluid density, uh, the fluid flow density, right? The 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 quantity of fluid that flows, and that's you guys you can see just like Ohm's law, okay? And so uh, the uh, current density J is equal to minus the uh, uh, the conductivity, okay, times the uh, the voltage uh, gradient, right? dV dH. Okay, so uh, uh, you know this is why we can we can we can even talk about uh, um, 
we can even talk about uh, the correspondence between permeability and uh, and uh, resistivity um, because um, of the similarity between Darcy's law and Ohm's Ohm's law. Now, because electric currents have zero viscosity, okay, uh, whereas water has a has a finite uh, viscosity, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, Ohm's law stays uh, stays linear to much smaller pores and much smaller connections between pores. Okay, then uh, then Darcy's law does. So here's a, for some further connection of, of electrical and uh, hydraulic properties. So there's a uh, transverse resistance, okay, which is the um, uh, uh, a sum of uh, thicknesses of uh, materials times uh, thickness of layers times uh, um, um, times their their resistivity. Okay, and uh, and that's uh, uh, sorry a um, uh, similar to the uh, and you can see it's mathematically the same as the as the hydraulic transmissivity, okay, which is thickness times um, times the uh, hydraulic uh, conductivity, um, uh, uh, the Darcy's law permeability, okay, and there's also the uh, <clears throat> The longitudinal conductance, which is similar to the leakage in uh, in hydraulic uh, uh, properties, and then average aquifer resistivities will uh, will go along with average hydraulic conductivities. Now you're probably asking, so you know what happens when the uh, mineral grains in the rock uh, are not. Um, uh, you know, perfect insulators, right? So, what if we get so much sulfide in there? You know, like up to twenty percent, uh, is that going to influence the resistivity? Well, yes. Okay, for these you know bizarre ores, right? If you've got more than one percent sulfides, I mean, you're talking ore here, right? Um, probably even at less than one percent, uh, you know, you've uh, you've got uh, uh, you've still got an ore. Uh, but this, you know, this diagram here is mostly talking about you know, high weight percent sulfide raw, uh, ores, okay, and um, you know when you when you have less than one percent, there's a big range of resistivity, and and the resistivity is determined by all these other factors. It's determined by Archie's law. It's determined by the clay content. Uh, it's determined uh, a lot by the uh, you know the the water in the pores and how how what its resistivity is. So um, you know uh, you get down to the low sulfide amounts and um, and uh, you know. Uh, sulfide is basically irrelevant, okay, uh, and you know you can see there's a there's a uh, at least an order of magnitude of range. As you start raising that that sulfide content up above one uh, percent, though, the resistivity starts to fall. And if you're over ten percent, well, again, there's a big range, but it's all at pretty low resistivity, you know, depending on what else is in the rock. But um, you know, to get to, and and to get those low resistivities, you know, down below ten, you've got to have uh, you know Pretty close to ten percent sulfides, uh, you know, weight percent content of the rock, and so again, that's a pretty rare ore. But but you know, maybe in certain settings, uh, this could be used as a sulfide uh, uh, exploration tool. Uh, another of the effects that was not uh, you know more a great much greater effect than the um, uh, than the uh, um, um, than the resistivity of the mineral, mineral grains is uh, water temperature. Okay, so here's a uh, and and maybe we could use this to do some geothermal exploration. Okay, so what would what will we get? You know, um, if you know the composition of the water, right? And here this is a, a salinity of, uh, that's fairly substantial. I think that's a thousand uh, uh, parts per million. So uh, uh, it's it's fairly uh, uh, you know fairly substantial salinity. All right, at um, zero degrees uh, C, well, when it's ice, right, it's it's uh, resistivity is above a thousand, but at zero degrees C, it's um, uh, it's uh, maybe uh, uh, one hundred and fifty, and then the resistivity actually falls a bit as it goes up to uh, boiling, up to one hundred degrees C. So actually, at this salinity, it's probably not ice yet, so it's just much more resistive. The temperature has a has a noticeable effect. Uh, and that's a problem, you know. Uh, 
uh, if we were going to use this as a geothermal exploration tool, well, we'd have to have good control on the salinity of the water. And if we're exploring, well, we don't have samples of the water. So, uh, but it might be able, you might be able to use this within one, uh, you know, one uh, one geothermal field to try to spot those places where the water's hotter than it is in other places. And the assumption of constant salinity may not be too bad uh, in a situation like that, where you're just within one field. So, um, you know, now let's let's uh, look at at uh, some rocks and, and other materials and uh, and some uh, um, and some uh, 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 I think there's a couple of minerals in here too, um, but uh, you know things that are are very uh, very very uh, 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 resistive, okay, that are insulators. There, at the, notice this is a conductivity. Um, scale here from 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the 8th, right? So conductivity is varying over 12 orders of magnitude here, okay? And the units should be millisiemens per meter, okay? And the Siemens should be a capital S. They've used a small s here improperly, all right? Just a, just a warning. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, perchloroethylene, um, is extremely uh, a resistive. It's an in extremely uh, resistive. That's why they use it as an insulator and in transformers. Kerosene, same deal. Okay, very very resistive, right? It's and and if you you know resistivity is the uh, uh, the inverse of conductivity, right? So if you take a ten to the minus three uh, resistivity, then you get a uh, a ten to the third. I mean ten to the minus three conductivity. You get a ten to the third power. Resistivity, right? So high, high uh, resistivity up in the thousands of ohmmeters. Uh, granite, okay, from one, you know, depending on the physical condition, depending on the porosity, depending on what what's in the porosity, right? Uh, it goes from you know one, um, one uh, uh, millisiemen. Oh, I'm sorry, this is millisiemen per meter, right? So this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is even more uh, resistive, right? So this is uh, ten to the minus three. Uh, Siemens uh, here, okay. So um, right, so that was ten to the seven, ten to the six, maybe for PCE uh, at the top of the PCE column. So uh, you know it'd be ten to the uh, uh, ten to the minus. I'm sorry, ten to the minus three millisiemens. So it'd be uh, um, it would be uh, uh, ten to the minus. Um, uh, minus six, so that'd be a million ohmmeters, right? Okay, and this goes from uh, one millisiemen per meter <coughs> down to you know ten to the third, ten. I'm sorry, ten to the minus third uh, millisiemens per meter, right? So granite uh, can go from a uh, thousand ohmmeters all the way down, uh, you know, all the way up to uh, um, uh, all the way up to uh, you know tens of uh, Tens of thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, uh, maybe a million uh, uh, ohmmeters. Okay, uh, and water. You know, temperature variations, salinity variations, huge range, right? It can be quite conductive. You know, ten to the fourth millisiemen per meter, um, and it can be quite insulating. All right, uh, it's not insulating enough to be used in transformers, but uh, um, it. Uh, uh, it, it has this huge range. Okay, limestone um, is uh, uh, again depends mostly on uh, the porosity and what's in it. Okay, basalt. All right, uh, unsaturated sand. You know is uh, fairly uh, uh, fairly resistive. Okay, sandstone uh, bigger range. Okay, uh, you get to saturated sand right, and suddenly you're filling that porosity with water instead of air. And the conductivity goes way up. Okay, shale, same deal. Okay, also saturated and also with clay in it, right? Dirty sands with clay, even uh, even less resistive, even more conductive. Uh, clays themselves are about the most uh, conductive uh, natural materials we'll see. Um, but uh, of course, it could be overruled by having saline water in the pores, right? Then it'll just go to the resistivity of the water in the pores. 
And then, uh, you know, leachate, mine tailings, you know, then you get to scrap metal, you know, very high conductivities. You know, that's where we get the last four orders of magnitude going on here. Here's some more uh, soil materials. Okay, and, and this scale now is in resistivity. One ohm meter, you know, very, very conductive at the bottom. And, uh, you know, it's not uh, properly registered here. So the clay and marl bar is there, right? Low resistivity. Get to loam. Well, that's soil with clay in it, but it, can, it, it has a lesser range, but it's kind of centered around uh, 10 uh, ohm meters. And, uh, you know, clay soils, well, you know, they're, they're going between uh, 30 and, you know, maybe uh, 50 and, um, uh, and 200 uh, uh, ohm meters, right? And uh, you know that's the range that we were we were in uh, in uh, and then sandy soils you know more resistive still maybe approaching a thousand ohm meters loose sands okay much uh, you know loose sands are dry much higher resistivities you know a uh, thousand to ten thousand river sand and gravel you know presumably with um, with clean water uh, in it in the pores and no clay right a thousand uh, or or more. Um, and why does that repeat? That must be 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6, okay. Um, glacial till, okay, you get the clay and the, and the finer porosity in there, and you, uh, uh, you, 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 you know, the resistivity goes down by a couple of orders of magnitude. Notice, you know, how resistivity varies, a couple of orders of magnitude, all right. Limestone, uh, let's see, chalk, huge range depending on the, uh, on the porosity. Limestones, um, are relatively more conductive. Um, yeah, let's see what's matching your crystalline rocks. Generally, a thousand or above. You know, basalt because of fracturing, usually somewhat less. Uh, sandstones, big range, depends a lot on porosity and what's in it. Um, limestones, you know, somewhat less of a range. Okay, there's chalk. Okay, so uh, that that gives you some uh, uh, some guidance there. Uh, you know, but the the what you really should pay attention to here is the many orders of magnitude that that you know reasonable rock resistivities can have, and how much it depends you know not on the matrix, not what kind of rock it is, but how fractured it is, what the porosity is, and what's in the porosity. So it's really a physical condition measurement, more than a you know a origin uh, or 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 um, provenance measurement. Okay, ohmmeter uh, measurements of. Uh, resistivities for clay materials, right? One to twenty ohm meters. Wet to moist sand, twenty to two hundred. Uh, shale, again, depends on, on you know how much porosity there is, what's in it. You know, one to five hundred uh, uh, ohm meters. Uh, porous limestone, you know, one hundred to a thousand. Dense limestone, okay, you're talking you know a lot less porosity there, and a lot higher resistivity. Metamorphic rocks, right? If they're fractured and full of salt water, they can be pretty low at 50 ohm meters, but uh, you know, a million would not be impossible. Uh, same thing with igneous rocks. Okay, clays. Uh, you know, they're high. The higher their cation exchange capability, and you might be familiar also. Uh, uh, UGEs may know that the uh, the higher the cation exchange capacity of a clay. The, the more it, of a swelling clay it is, okay? And swelling clay is a big construction hazard, uh, especially in this area where the swelling clays uh, uh, weather out of uh, the volcanic rocks we have around here. So, you know, nice clean kaolinite, right, which doesn't swell, um, you know, has a lower cation exchange uh, capacity and, uh, and it's going to have a lower resistivity, okay? Uh, you know, you go up to scale, chlorite, illite, okay, you get to the really swelling clays, Montmorillonite, and then vermiculite, which is a very specialized clay you don't see much uh, uh, around. You know, it's been mined out whether, where, where you would see it in this kind of quantity. Uh, you know, uh, 10 times the cation exchange capacity of kaolinite, and, and also a much lower resistivity than uh, kaolinite, probably 10 times, uh, or 10 times lower resistivity for Montmorillonite than uh, kaolinite. Okay, just a reminder here: resistance versus uh, resistivity, uh, and apparent resistivity. Okay, and um, uh, now uh, uh, getting the resistance of a length of wire. Right, we can also determine we can determine the resistivity by doing this experiment and solving this equation for rho instead of for r. 
right? We have a length of material. We have uh, the number of amps we pu are pumping through it. We measure the resistance of the circuit, and uh, you know you can see that uh, uh, if you take uh, the resistance and you divide by the length and you multiply by the cross-sectional area. I'm sorry, that's not the amps. That's the area, right? Then you get the resistivity. All right. So um, that's how uh, that's how we'll we'll measure resistivity, and that's what the next lecture will be on. Uh, as I introduce you to resistivity survey methods. It's basically just this, using this equation.